welcome back everyone my name is Sagar and we are back here with another video so today in this video I am going to show you my recommended way of learning Android application development and uh, personally I am also an Android developer so I can share you some best learning resources from where you can start your Android journey and uh, today I am going to show you a fully fledged roadmap so that you can start from very basics and you can become a professional Android developer and uh, you can later use this skill to either create project on freelance basis or you can also get a job as an android developer so without making any further ado let's get started so before directly jumping into the roadmap let me just answer some basic questions that uh, mostly beginners will have and the first question is is there any future for android application development and the answer is definitely yes and uh, obviously that's why i'm making this video the main question is how and why there is the future. So let me just give you an example. So suppose there is a company and their main product is their application. And uh, will you recommend that uh, they can save their cost and uh, they will create a cross platform application and uh, they can just compromise with their app? No, right? So what they will do, they will just focus on native Android development because uh, that way they can create more efficient and faster applications. So definitely the demand for native development is not going anywhere. Either that is Android or iOS. So the next question is what is the device configuration requirement for android application development so we are going to use android studio and that is a heavy software so i will suggest you to have at least 8 gb of ram and the processor can be ryzen 5 or i5 so i think that will work and now the main question is here which programming language is best for android application development either java or kotlin and uh, i hope you already guessed it kotlin is the right answer Kotlin is the official language for Android development and you don't need Java anymore to write any Android code. So now let's dive into the roadmap. So you can see there is this beautiful roadmap and I will drop the link in the description so that you can check it out. And at every node I am also having this comment where you can just find out the learning resources. So these are some resources that you can also refer official documentation of Android and these are the best place where you can learn Android development and after that my medium articles so i am also consistently writing android articles on medium and hash node and after that my youtube channel is also there and in future i am also gonna upload more android related content so first of all you have to learn about kotlin so kotlin is the primary language for android development and here you can see first you have to learn about basics object oriented programming and that is the main key point because in android development this is this is the main thing that will help you build a robust application and here you can see you can refer to this official Kotlin documentation to learn this thing. And after learning this Kotlin basics, you can either move to XML or Compose UI. So XML was the older way how we used to create Android UI. And now there is this Jetpack Compose, which is the declarative way of creating UI for Android. And uh, this is much, much better than writing code in XML. But why am I writing both the things here? If Compose is the future, then we should directly learn that. Yeah, that is true. But... Uh, you can also tackle XML in some of your projects. If you are joining some company, then uh, there might be a case where you have to work with XML. So you should know what is the XML layout, how you, you can use constraint layout, or you can just manage small, small things. So you don't have to master all the things. You have to just be aware of uh, what things are present in XML. And after learning about UI, you can create your first project. And uh, that can be anything you can show in your UI. And after that, you can learn about this activity lifecycle. So what is the activity lifecycle? Let me just give you a brief so that you can consider how the screen in your app is creating and how it is getting destroyed after you close your app. So you can learn all the details things in uh, this official documentation and also in my blog. And after that, now you are ready to create your first application that uh, you can create a calculator app. But why specifically a calculator app? That is just my recommendation. You can also create any other app. Uh, calculator app basically let you manage your ui very efficiently and you can also store your uh, calculated values on configuration changes so first you learn about this activity life cycle then you can also restore your value in this calculator app and uh, now you have created your first step so that is time to save the project and that you can do with vcs so what is a vcs vcs means version control system and git is one of the most famous tool that you can use to save your applications and github is also there that you can link to store your project on servers so that even if your local memory is clear you can just access your projects anywhere and if you are not learning about git and github here that will not gonna affect your android journey you can also learn it later when you have created multiple projects but i will recommend you to have some basic knowledge of git and github so that you can save your projects okay 
and uh, in this comment you can also always find these learning resources so after learning about vcs you can move to multiple activities and navigation between activities so there is one thing that is called as intent and after you learned about multiple activities you will have a good idea about activity life cycle and these are the learning resources so after multiple activities now you can move to compose navigation so compose is the way to define your screens and you can define multiple screens just in one activity so compose is a very cool thing and uh, you can learn about compose navigation there are a lot of things you can learn in compose so that is the point where you can learn a lot of things and here you can see the official documentation is the best place where you can learn everything and uh, there are also google code labs that you can refer to learn about multiple things in compose there are compose drawers compose bottom sheets compose app bars navigations and a lot and after that you can see there are these four things room db data store networking and firebase so whatever thing you are learning here is irrespective of each other either you can first learn about room db or after that you can learn about firebase so that will not affect in which order you are learning them so let me just explain you what is this room db room db is just a wrapper around your local database that is sqlite so while using room db you can learn how you can store your data locally in your android device and uh, these are the official documentation for that and uh, what is data store so data store you can consider is a smaller version of a database you cannot store large values in it you can save some user preferences or some small values and here you have to learn about the difference between using room database and data store and you need to know where you have to use the room db or where you have to use data store and then what is this networking networking means api calls so in android you have to also interact with apis so that means at a particular url you have to make requests and you have to get back a json response and according to that you can show your data in ui so let me give you some project example what you can create so you can say here movies so you can create a request to a movies api and you can get the data of all the movies what is the rating of this movie and what is the ticket price what is the release date and about actors and after that there is this books api so there is a google books api that was my first project when i learned about this networking thing so you can get the list of all the books details their authors and uh, other things and uh, there are these uh, some cartoon apis like uh, there is a very famous pokedex project that uh, that will give you the data of all the pokemons and uh, after that there is this images api that uh, you can use to get the images according to your search queries so these are some project ideas that you can use with this networking and after that there is this firebase so what is firebase this firebase is also a google product and in android it can work as your storage system so there you can store your user data their user messages or any other thing you want so with this firebase you can also create multiple type of projects you can use firebase authentication feature that means uh, you can see most of the apps have a phone authentication or google authentication so you can also learn how to use that thing or you can use the real time database that means you can create an application that sends or receive messages in real time or you can also use firebase storage you can use fcm that means you can send live notifications to your users or you can use firebase functions so there are a lot of things that you can learn here and uh, there is also an alternative for firebase that is called as appright so that is also a cool open source project that you can check it out but definitely if you are an android developer you should know about firebase and after learning about all these four things you can also create their projects so after learning about room database you can create a to do project that means you can have some text fields you can store some notes in it and uh, you can save it locally so that is going to be your to do app and uh, with data store you can store some user preferences like uh, notification preference or user profile preferences or whatever things and uh, we already learned about this uh, networking examples and also with firebase so after learning about all these four things what is this coroutines deep dive so coroutine is a concept that will help you write asynchronous code this is a very vast and interesting topic that you should learn so here i am not going to go too much technical but uh, let me just give you a brief so with using this coroutine you can run your any program without disturbing the main thread that means your ui is not going to lag and uh, you can just run your any programs you can make your network calls you can get some data or you can interact with firebase or you can store some data in local database so so as a android developer you should have a great knowledge about coroutines and their work <clears throat> and after learning this and after learning about this you can learn about architecture and design patterns so what is this thing as a android developer you should know how you can write efficient code and uh, 
you your code your code should not have any bugs and it should be also scalable so let me just give you an example you are working with your data so that data is separate and that is coming from your network and you are showing that in your ui and uh, that is particular to your application so that is also separate and how you are interacting between them so there should be an interface so that is how you can structure your architecture and in android the most famous one is mvvm architecture that means model view view model so so you can also learn about that from the official documentation and that is a must if you want to be a professional android developer so while you are learning about architecture you can also learn about this kotlin flows so what is state flow shared flow mutable state flow so you can learn about everything and these are also going to use in your compose ui and uh, after that you can learn about dependency injection and as i said there will be a ui layer there will be a data layer and they will be depending on each other in some ways and uh, there comes the dependency injection so hilt is the dependency injection tool that we are using and uh, android is backed by google and uh, whatever things google will promote that will only work in android so here google is promoting hilt so hilt is the main tool that you should learn about dependency injection and uh, google is also promoting mvvm architecture so you should also learn about that and uh, after that uh, after learning about dependency injection you can create your mega project so at this point you already learned about your local database you learned about data store you learned about firebase and you also learned about networking so that you can interact with your apis so now you learn a lot of things and now you can create your mega projects so mega project will be like you can create some chatting application that is storing your all user data and you can create some database management for your local vendors and you can just sell out that project so after you have created your mega project you can move to testing so there can be ui testing unit testing and uh, that will make sure your app should not break so after completing the testing of your application you can say that you have created a great application and after testing you can just learn all the things on the go so this is not all about android there are a lot of things that are remaining here so there are uh, knowledge about uh, gradle files there are lint tools there are a lot of libraries that you can use and uh, there are also google services that you can use in your application and uh, there is no limit you can use machine learning you can use your device sensors and there are a lot of things that you can use but i am not writing here all the things and the reason is you can learn all the things on the go so when you see you need this thing so you can learn about that and you can just implement it so once you feel comfortable in reading the documentation or finding the bugs and solving them so you can just create any application that you want and uh, you just have to implement the things by just reading their documentations so i can guarantee after learning about all these things you can call yourself a android developer and you can create any application that you want so i will link this roadmap in the description so that you can check it out and uh, also access these learning resources also if you want to connect with me then you can directly reach me out or you can also join our d4 communities discord server link is in the description and i hope you like this video and uh, do subscribe to our channel so that you can access more android related content in future so thank you for watching